What is going on everybody? My name is Rolly here. What I have here is another 2017 MacBook Pro and a gazillion components that it is in need of. This is the last fully upgradable MacBook Pro. And just to demonstrate why, so you just need to take this out and voila, you can replace it with an aftermarket one that makes it the last upgradable MacBook Pro. Now what's also special about this is that this MacBook does not have any T2 chip Therefore, this isn't really going to cause any issues regarding to open core legacy patcher because as we know, these MacBooks can only go up to Ventura. I got this for about $99. It was pretty cheap, surprisingly. And this is the maxed out to the brim version. So this has an i7 and this has 16 gigabytes of memory, which is still plenty enough even today. What we're going to be doing is we're going to go ahead and replace the battery because as you can see, it doesn't exist. Because this is a four parts MacBook, as you can see, we have a couple of missing wires in this location. And that's why we got this little replacement right here. This is for the battery. Now this should be a pretty simple process really. So this is the replacement battery right here. And I'm also just realizing that there are two missing screws that we need to make sure gets in contact. Maybe I could get some different styles of screws to fit on these three holes right here. Now double checking with the cables right here that are very known to fail. These are the backlight and display cables. One slim, one thick, but they're very slim thickness wise. Uh, those are tend to fail as you open and close the MacBook because it's brushing against something that is metal over time. So obviously Apple revised that at a later date. We'll see what happens later in the future regarding that. I'm gonna go ahead and get started with grabbing my screws right here. I'm gonna set of screws. I got a gazillion screws right here. I just need to find the right thickness as well as the right size for this. They're spending a couple of minutes trying to find the right size for the screws that I'm missing for these two right here. I just need to find a big one right here to hold this massive connector into place. But from that, as you can see, they will like separate their right height, right size, dimension. No, they look like the original one. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I'll go to the other side. We're going to get a cost of dimension. Guess what? $9. There goes my makeshift screws and my makeshift electrical tape cover right here. Now let's double check if this actually, oh, we got a screw somewhere. We need to see if this starts up. Now I am using my sister's hard drive or SSD right here. And look at that. <laughs> it works wonders. Now, now that I'm thinking about it, what I need to do is I should probably swap the SSD that I'm actually have invested a lot of programs and installations in. Okay, so this is a 2017 MacBook Pro that I made a video of a couple of weeks ago. I've been using this as a day-to-day -day task when it comes to browsing the internet, checking the emails, checking the calendar and all that basic stuff. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the SSD here and swap it for this one right here, which my sister has. So that way she can just use this MacBook like nothing has ever happened with her previous MacBook. Oh, quick update by the way for this MacBook. I managed to make the keyboard work again. What I did was I literally mashed each individual key. So for the space bar, I did this type of fixing. And I guess what that does is essentially loosen up the dirt underneath of each key. And it sounds like I'm breaking the keyboard, but when in reality, that's the only way for me to really type properly without having to do any double presses. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew SSD right here. I should have just left it as is, but you know, I wanted to double check if this MacBook actually starts. So that's fine. There you go. And then, oh, where did that go? There you go. Successfully swapped. So now this is a fully functional MacBook from my sister that she can use. I was holding it for a week just so I can test the battery and make sure there's no any other defects uh, apart from the keyboard, which I kind of fixed, right? Now that we also have put the new hard drive or SSD here, we have new battery. Hopefully this thing will hold into place, by the way. Uh, we're going to go ahead and clean this up. I'm going to go ahead and use AirCan and Everything seems to be solid, nothing making any noises. Oh, and a little bit of mushiness over there. Let's go ahead and start this thing up. Now, condition wise, we need to clean this up. Definitely a lot of scratches here and there. I think this is a very low grade condition wise, according to the eBay seller. You could see how worn out those keys are. I mean, 
screen's fine, just needs to be clean. Definitely a lot of dings on the bottom. Now that we have booted up this MacBook, we're gonna go ahead and check out the battery condition because uh, of course, that is one thing that we need to be concerned of. So checking the battery right here, no warning signs, and looks like we're hovering around 40 degrees with no fan spinning. So at least it's not running too hot at the moment. And look at that, <laughs> spikes up right up. Aside from me being signed out because this SSD was from another computer and Apple is going crazy right now with its Apple ID settings, the battery is in normal condition which is fantastic because that means that this battery is in good working order and it looks like it was last charged last year in january 11th 2024 at 4 47 p.m so this mac i got for 99 and i mean quite a lot for 99 plus i guess ssd if you don't have access to ssd a new battery which i got for 20 bucks all in all it was probably around 140 plus shipping on this macbook and really the crucial part for this for me is that 16 gigabytes of memory right there this being the last fully upgradable macbook with its ssd that i can easily replace with a third party and upgrade it to whatever i want when it dies because it is on its way of dying the ssd 16 gigabytes is a must 8 gigabytes now just does not cut it and there's a lot of memory swapping already when it comes to 8 gigabytes of ram you can see swap files use is zero imagine you only have 8 gigabytes of ram you only have 4 gigabytes to spend before it swaps and uses your SSD. And because this SSD came from a eight gigabyte MacBook, the SSD lifetime life indicator only shows it has about 59% remaining before it has a lot of chance or a big chance of failure. Now, so far, this is totally fine. It is on average. Once that thing goes down to low and bad, it's basically done for. Personally, if I had important files on this computer, I would probably start backing things up and start considering replacing the SSD. And, you know, that's, that's honestly one of the worst parts about this too, is that because this is the last upgradable MacBook, imagine Imagine 2018, 2019, 2020, all the new MacBooks that are soldered on with their SSDs on their logic board. Yeah, that's going to be a pretty penny when it comes to replacement. So it's very important to double check the condition of the SSD as well as the amount of RAM you have on that MacBook. Now, I'm not going to be using this MacBook for a lot of heavy tasks, even though you see Lightroom here in Photoshop. Uh, that's just just in case scenarios for me. This MacBook is going to be used to run OpenCore Legacy Patcher because it doesn't have any T1 or T2 uh, security chip on this MacBook. So it doesn't have any touch bar. That's why. Because of that, I believe this MacBook has the most compatibility wise with OpenCore Legacy Patcher in the future. Also, because this is 16 gigabytes of memory, we could theoretically run Sequoia right here, which actually is telling us to upgrade, <laughs> which is kind of funny. You could tell whoever owned this in the past really is concerned about their privacy because you can see there's scratches over here that probably tells you that there's a camera cover on that but i hate to tell you guys every time someone or every time i see someone with a cover on their laptop you know where does all that privacy go when you have a smartphone i feel like smartphones have more tracking capabilities compared to macbooks or any laptops in general because i mean if you close this thing you can't see anything right so it's kind of like ironic on how people perceive that type of privacy issue with their webcam on their laptop when in reality your phone your tablet everything around you there's security cameras everywhere you could be seen this is an i7 non-touch bar model supposedly a lot of the people are saying that it's actually worse than the i5 model may be true in a lot of scenarios especially when it comes to thermals because as we all know these are notorious for being one of the worst thermal designed macbook pros that doesn't help the fact that there's only one fan on this measly 13 inch non-touch bar model. Besides all that, personally nowadays, we all know these MacBooks are just not gonna cut it for a lot of heavy duty tasks, but how does it perform in a lot of day-to-day -day task? As long as you set your expectations on a $150, $200 MacBook, then you'll understand the difference between this and a $1,000 computer. This is surprisingly not too shabby. It's pretty quick for what it is. And you can see the dual core doing its thing. This normally would load pretty quick, but because this is a dual core, as you can see, it takes quite a bit of time to really render the distance around here. Well, the thing is, I can't really see anything, can I? This thing is covering my whole screen, so I can't really test this without 
have me turn off the FPS information over here. Oh my gosh, there's a bird? Aw, look at you. I've never seen birds in Minecraft. It's really weird using a trackpad to play this game. Now you can hear that fan is indeed spinning, but it's nothing too intrusive. At least for me, I've heard worse. And light it up and see how much frame drops we get. <laughs> okay, we, we got a good amount of frame drops and where did the bird go? Oh no. Getting good at this. Level five, how far can you take this? No, ooh, 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 no. Now, one of the downsides about this computer is that you're gonna be having to deal with, or if not already, the horrible butterfly keyboards because sometimes they have the tendency to double press. They have the tendency to get stuck. And Apple did a recall a long time ago with these, but that's no longer the case because it's been, what, over seven years by now? And so that is something you need to keep in mind. Okay, on to the best part with these MacBooks. The best part about these MacBooks is that because these are Intel machines, you're able to run bootcamp. So if I go ahead and go to other right here and go to bootcamp assistant, essentially what I have is an Intel PC. So I can just continue, allocate certain amounts of space on my hard drive for Windows partition, and eventually it will download Windows and you could use Windows natively. So if you have applications that you can't really run with Mac OS, you could do it with Windows. The display on this MacBook is pretty good. It gets up to 500 nits and this is a P3 display. So it is crisp and photo color accurate, which is surprising. Now Ventura is the last officially supported version for this MacBook Pro. Now, luckily enough, it is still indeed supported by Apple with here and there security updates for Safari and your general bug fixes and whatnot. The great thing about this MacBook is that you could open Open Core Legacy Patcher. And as you can see right here, now this is not really a how-to video but if you go ahead and download some mac os versions that are far more recent compared to ventura right here like sonoma and sokoya you can see you could easily do that with this macbook uh we can go ahead and go to sino nexus which is my youtube channel right here and you can see it's pretty quick you know like i mean there's really nothing wrong with this computer when it comes to using it. Now, yes, granted, this is just web browser. I'm looking at this MacBook in a spectacle glasses that I'm just gonna be using this for web browsing. Now, when it comes to heavy loads such as editing, which we have Lightroom Classic right here, or Photoshop, you can see it takes a bit some time to load, but once it loads up, it's not too shabby. You know, I mean, this is probably a really big difference between the M chips and these good old dual core Intel MacBooks, but it's not too bad. And the only time it will really get bogged down is by the fact that a lot of times these MacBooks only came with eight gigabytes of memory. If you have the 16 gigabytes, then you'll generally won't have too much issues when it comes to multitasking. And look at that, 14.6 is recommended for maximum performance and correct operation of Adobe Photoshop. Thanks for letting me know that I have an old MacBook Book. Now I'm trying to run the battery down to the brim so that way we can do a complete cycle in this battery. That's also why we're running a lot of intensive apps right now. But again, looking at it, you could do a lot of things right here. If we, if we go ahead and generate fill, uh, maybe clouds. Can we do clouds? Agree. Give it a few seconds to load with generating. But look, it's working perfectly fine when it comes to just using it. You shouldn't have too much expectation when it comes to these MacBooks, that's for sure. And I mean, the fact that they're already over seven years old, you know, that's already something that you need to keep in mind with these MacBooks. To conclude this video, the best way to sum up these Intel machines, not just this specific 2017 non-touch bar model, is that these Intel machines still have a lot of life left. It's just the fact that Intel versus M chips, the performance comparison is just on another level. But you also have to keep in mind, these Intel machines are old. I mean, they are five, six, seven years old at this point, uh, at least this design. And so you really cannot blame that the M chips are far more superior because I mean, they're the newest of the new, right? You're supposed to have progress when it comes to technology. The only thing for me going with these Intel machines is that I can run whatever I want when it comes to operating systems. So I can run Linux, I can run Windows, I can run even Chrome OS, which nobody seems to like. And that's really something that I wish, and hopefully soon, M chips are coming. I heard that Windows have been trying to support ARM chips now. And so by the time, maybe two to three years, I hope to fully switch to the M chips 
of Apple, so that way I don't have to deal with the freaking heat of Intel's with their overheating issues and whatnot, because my daily driver is indeed an Intel i9 on a MacBook Pro 16 inch. If they can make me not pay parallel yearly subscription and just natively run on MacBooks uh, with their M chips, I would be delighted. And if they don't have any driver issues at that point, that would even be better. Really hoping Apple would eventually allow Windows with their ARM support on Windows 11 to finally run natively on MacBook. That's really one of my biggest wishes right there. That way we don't have to deal with these older machines. But for now, these are still worth it. These are still perfectly working machines. And you know, for a hundred bucks, 120, 150 dollars, you could definitely get a lot for what you have right now. And yes, the M1 is getting cheaper and cheaper. But you also have to keep in mind, those MacBooks only have eight gigabytes of memory. And by the time they came out, eight gigabytes was already cutting it. And so a lot of those have non-swappable SSDs. And when it comes to not having enough memory, uh, Mac OS tends to memory swap. And so over time, that SSD has a lot more wear than you might think with a measly eight gigabytes of memory. And so really, this is not a bad idea if you have expectations or I guess set your expectations low. It's really the best for that. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys later.